welcome you live inside the historic Hobart Arena. JT Zaddle rejoining as you see 15 minutes up on the big board. The Trojans and the PHA Prowlers from the Capital Hockey Conference is the tilt tonight inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy, Ohio. Glad to have everybody along for this one. And it's promising to be quite the exciting hockey game between two non-conference rivals that have not seen each other in action inside this building in either club's history. And so that's an exciting mark right there as we saw the pregame festivities featuring the teacher appreciation night here in Troy, Ohio. Quite a number of educators from Troy High School, obviously, but also a lot of family members who are educators who are a part of this event as well, including a former Troy Trojan coach in Jeff Owen, who was also invited to be a part of this event. And how could you leave out the Howes family as first year head coach Preston Howes had both his wife and his mother, both of which are teachers, invited by his players to be a part of this event tonight. And so as we get set for the opening faceoff at Center Ice, your referee is brought to you by the Ohio High School Athletic Association is Mr. Bill Peck and Mr. Lee McClure in the stripes tonight. The Trojans in their brand new, very nice looking gray uniforms. We'll skate from right to left on your screen here on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network, wherever you happen to be watching us or listening to us tonight as the Prowlers in their road blacks and the purple. Lee McClure at center ice to drop the opening faceoff. 15 minutes up on the big board and we are underway. And right away that one pumped in. Played back into the corner. Cycled up high. Leaving the puck out from the trapezoid. He'll try and play it and stuff it sideways, and he'll lose sight of the puck. Didn't know where it went. Had no idea where that puck went. But it was enough for Lee McClure to stop the play. Now with 14.43 to go. Having some clock difficulty again tonight. Do apologize for that as the faceoff controlled now by the Prowlers. They will send it all the way down, rink wide, and icing the call. Icing will bring the faceoff back inside the Prowlers zone and give a good opportunity for both clubs to get their first real wholesale changes of the game. Still scoreless from Hobart Arena. If you're just joining us, a non conference affair tonight, a battle between a Swashel and a Capital hockey conference member in this PHA Crowler club. As there's the cycle on the side of the cage, still trying to control it away. Finally picked up by the Prowlers out to center, but not as that's stymied at the line twice. Backhand feed glove down, and that's enough now to stop the clock. And a dandy of a move right there. The backhander through the slot had enough eyeballs to make it to the netminder. And so the faceoff remain inside the Prowler zone. And one right away, top of the circle, but the bouncing puck in between those circles is a low shot. Finally shot right on. And a little bit of a snow shower there from Luke Harris. Uh, just, hello, how you doing? And welcome to Troy. As Preston Howes getting some fresh legs for this faceoff that remains inside the Prowler zone. 14.08 to go here in this first period, still scoreless. Glad to have you with us on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network on Facebook and YouTube as they'll work it into the corner. Off the half boards and out. Steps up on the play, plays it on the dashers, back out to center ice. In front, there's Ian Francis not trying to get something going. And finally, out into the slot, a shot, turned aside. That one's going to make it all the way back again. Now for the Trojans. Breakout attempt, nobody was there. Finally hit against the Dashers, and Smith is able to clear this one all the way down for fresh legs. 
so they'll play this one again. Simon Latif, the starting netminder for the Trojans, making those critical saves, setting up this breakout attempt to sext in a drive as that one was right into the breadbasket down low. And enough to stop the clock now with 13.06 to go. Faceoff again remaining inside the zone. DeLong, the netminder for the Prowlers, was able to make the point blank save, top of the slot. And right from the draw, this one controlled by the Prowlers as they'll scoop it up ahead. Across the Trojans line, they'll force it deep. Back inside. Still playing it away. That pass, now ahead for more a backhand. Prowler's getting a good shot on goal there, but here come the Trojans out through center ice. And just over the Prowler line, big hit against the Dashers, knocks that one away at the last second as that one skirts right in front of the Prowler's bench. In onside are the Trojans, is holding the puck here. Sexton, toe drag, walking in, impossible angle, delayed penalty coming. It's gonna go against the visitors as they touch it up. A delayed penalty signaled from way behind the play. Lee McClure has the roughing call. And with 12.22 to go, the Trojans will get the first man advantage of the game. This one brought to you by Clope, America's favorite garage doors. You hear more in the box for roughing is the call. Five to one, the shots on goal. Still favoring the Trojans, 12.22 to go. And now the Trojans on the power play for the first time tonight. A big win last night on the road in Kettering in a conference matchup for the Trojans. They're trying to make it a two-game win streak here with a win non-conference tonight. And they have a power play opportunity to jump out ahead. Played at the line and forced inside the Prowler's end. Now it's going to be hit with a high stick, and they're going to move the faceoff back inside the Trojans' end. And so a high stick violation will move the faceoff inside the Trojans' end, glove side of Latif. And in to take the draw will be Smith. 12.08 to go, 145 on the Trojans' man advantage, their first of the night. That one played ahead. Bouncing puck coming in at the last second. He wasn't quite sure what happened to that puck. But he was able to just kind of hold on. And that was enough to stop the clock. And keep the face off inside the Trojan 10. One cleanly back into the far corner as they'll wrap it around on this cycle high. Back to the point hit off sides and that's going to hit off a Trojan stick and that's going to stay inside and that's the right call to be made by the official inside and that'll keep the face off inside the Trojans end another souvenir puck for a Trojan faithful brought to you by OGT the official game puck provider of Troy Trojans hockey an excellent souvenir that you can even get autographed after the game as the Trojans one touch pass up to the wing now inside the Prowler's end. Here's Smith, throws on the brakes, top of the circle, works it out in the slot, he scores! Top shelf, where Mama keeps the biscuits! The first toe drag wasn't enough, but it put him inside the short side angle and he was able to pop it top shelf a beautiful backhander to make this a one nothing hockey game and that an even strength goal as the bouncing puck knocked away at the last second again by DeLong we'll go downstairs to Roger Mumpower momentarily for the official word on the goal but it is a one nothing lead early for the Trojans an even strength goal as this one works it ahead now for the Prowlers. Across the Trojans line, they'll force it in deep. Left wing corner now behind the net. Latif going post to post, keeping a close eye on that puck out of the trapezoid. Man 
Grant takes a tumble, loose puck out in front. He didn't see the clearing pass. Luckily, it hit off the end boards. And now here come the Trojans with a big head of steam back the other way and a drive low on the ice as DeLong will hold on. And that's enough to stunt the clock now with 10.47 to go. Eli Wenning getting credit for the goal. That was Will Barnes that put that shot low on the ice and got the face off inside the zone. And so that goal credited to Eli Wenning. Somebody's been working on his backhand this summer and you can tell. Francis not getting a helper on that one as well to make it a one nothing hockey game early in the first period. They'll work it back at the point, and that's held on near side by Burkhardt. Forced back into the corner and out of the trapezoid it goes. Hit against the Dashers, still trying his breakout attempt. One touch pass and two wide across center ice as they'll work it back to the Trojans line where they'll stymie it, but it's hit up and into the benches, nearly getting a piece of goaltender Noah Carver on the bench as well. And what can you say? You got to make the stop, whether you're in the crease or you're riding the pine. And he did just that to stop the clock now with 10.14 to go here in this opening period. one nothing Troy if you're just joining us right here on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network. An even strength goal. Trojans remain 0 for on the power play so far as this one played off the end boards and back out in front where it's scooped up momentarily by the Trojans racing for it at the last second. It was Mason Weaver. He gets hit off the puck and loses his stick. Loose puck again on the short side of the cage. Forced around and a delayed penalty coming. And he is hurt on the play. You can see right there, the play continues in the other direction. He is very hard to get up. He took a high stick way up into the beak. And you can see he's taking plenty of time to get to the bench. And that got him good. That's Cooper Sexton that got up high under the cage, and now the officials are going to have to decide what happens. The athletic trainer from Premier Health Upper Valley Medical Center is on the ice attending to him right now. And it looks like we're going to get a five-minute major for high sticking on this one here with 941. As Sexton's going to remain on the bench. He's not headed down the tunnel just yet. He was able to leave the ice under his own power, but huh, I'll tell you what, that was a scary scene there with what we've had happen recently at some of the higher levels when you get things anywhere near the neck or the face. Everybody in the hockey world collectively holds our breath, so we're glad that it certainly wasn't worse than it was. And Now the Trojans will have a five-minute power play. Anthony Moore, five minutes for high sticking, and now the loose puck in the crease, finally knocked away. And so the Trojans get their second power play of the evening, brought to you by Clope, America's favorite garage door. A five minute major for high sticking. And certainly a penalty that was warranted with what we saw behind the play against Cooper Sexton, who more frequently than he would prefer is the intended target of nefarious actions. We saw that last week on the road as well. And sometimes that just comes with the territory. Prowler. I'm gonna ice this one all the way down where that one's gonna be scooped up by Latif in front of his crease. One touch pass and ahead out through center ice over the line. Barnes was able to force that one deep into the left wing corner. Bouncing puck scooped up by the Prowlers. Now out they come. Short-handed, one wide across the line. Dangling through, he scores! He had all day to hit that one. And unfortunately, that one just squeaked Five hole, a short-handed goal for the Prowlers makes this a 1-1 hockey game. Now that's not exactly what head coach Preston Howes was hoping this power play was going to develop into.
still four minutes and four seconds on the Trojans man advantage brought to you by Klopeg. And out through center. Here's Ian Francis Knott. Throws on the brakes, top of the circle. Takes the hit, stripped to the puck, but back for Sexton. He did not miss a single shift after taking that high stick. And he's back on the ice. Playing it ahead on this breakout attempt. Nearly intercepted at their own line, but this one pumped inside the zone. And racing for it down low was Wenick. Back out to center. Now trickling back to Sexton, playing D at his own line. Nearly tripped up again. Skating through the middle. And not much comes of it. This one's going to meander its way all the way back to Latif in that. Played around. Now on the breakout attempt, here's Ian Francis not Drops it back. He already picked up an apple on Wenning's first goal tonight. The game's first goal. One point in as many attempts as this one. Going to be iced all the way down again. Played by Latif in front of his crease. He'll force it ahead. Trojans still on the power play for another minute, or excuse me, two minutes and 47 seconds, but have not been able to get much offense generated as Luke Harris tries to do just that. There's a shot, point blank, turned aside by DeLong. The bouncing puck is going to make it all the way out to center, and the Trojans will once again retreat back at their own line. Does it rink wide? A bit too rich for Tidwell, and so that one forced back ahead. Now for Weaver, is Smith from the bench able to back check and help out on this breakout attempt now on the far wing. One touch intercepted again by the Prowlers and the Trojans really struggling to get offense going on this extended power play and stripped of the puck again on a poke check. That shot turned aside in a skate. Trojans panicking a little bit as they realize they can't get the offense. And now the... Prowlers getting a much needed line change as the Trojans out of their own zone on this breakout attempt. Here's Sexton himself across the line. Pulls it back and shoots just wide off the end boards. Rebound back into the far wing corner. Play down from the trapezoid, still on the far wing. Scooped up by Weaver back to the point. One touch pass back for Luke Harris. He's got all day. He shoots! He saw daylight, but it closed up at the last moment. And the Prowlers forcing that one back again, taking a lot of the energy out of this building, especially facing a 1-1 deficit. The netminder D-Long is just going to hold on, and holy cow, that was a slog if I've ever seen one. The energy you could just feel sucked out of that power play, which still has a minute 15 to go. 5.56 remaining in the first period. It's 1-1. And the Trojans really had the flow and tempo early. And since that go-ahead tying goal by the Prowlers really has taken a lot of the wind out of their sails. And so here's an attempt right there by Sexton to reinflate that. Delayed penalty coming. It's going to go against Troy for a hooking. That one makes it all the way back down, and now we're going to get the call for hooking from way behind the play, and now that'll negate the remainder of the power play for the Trojans, and we'll skate four on four for 55 seconds as Ian Francis not got that stick tangled up on the breakout attempt for the Prowlers, and that's enough to sit in the box two minutes, and you feel shame. Faceoff remains inside the Trojans' end. This time, stick side of Latif. That one won by the Prowlers. And they'll force it down low. Off the kick plate. Scooped up. Backhand feed, but he pays for it dearly in the slot. And now this one clears out to center ice. Regrouping at the line and in on side. Right back. Shot. Turned aside. 30 seconds remaining on the penalty for the Prowlers. Minute 30 remaining on the penalty to the Trojans. We still skate four on four before the Prowlers will have an abbreviated power play. They're first of the night. There's a shot from Rowley. Couldn't get much going. Right back top of the slot. Trojan sloppy on this defense. Can't get into position. Finally able to push it out to neutral ice, but not ideal. Allowing them to take those pot shots at Latif. 
and forcing it back inside their own zone. Fresh legs, but this one signaled for icing. Icing the call, and just barely an icing as the penalty to the Trojans expired. 59 seconds to go on that penalty to Ian Francis not. 4.35 to go. And it'll be Will Barnes in to take the face off for the Trojans inside the Prowler end. The draw is going to be flipped up and out of play. And so we'll do that one again. And the faceoff is going to come out of the zone. As they say, the Prowlers never touched it. It was directly flipped up after the faceoff. And so they'll do that one again from the neutral zone. Forced back inside the Prowler end. Played into the Dashers. Right wing side before it comes around. Prowlers are going to scoop that one up. 45 seconds in counting on the Prowler power play, their first of the night. Bouncing puck. Again, chipped up off the net. Played out to center ice. Intercepted. In front of the penalty box. They'll try to work it free. Finally back to the left side. Gale blows a tire in his own line, but is able to still continue forcing that one ahead. And the Trojans simply curling off as they're facing a tremendous load of pressure. Ten seconds in counting on their penalty before we return to full strength hockey for the first time in about six minutes. Here's an errant pass picked up by the Prowlers, working it back down low, and now we return to full strength. As the bouncing puck knocked away at the last moment. Three minutes and 25 seconds to go in this tied first period. But here's a pickup. Loose puck scooped up by Brady Smith. He scores! That's about as good a highlight real goal as you're going to get. An even strength go-ahead goal from Brady Smith. A snapshot and a rocket it was. 3.16 to go here in this first period. The Trojans back in the driver's seat. A 2-1 lead. As Di Pietro for the Prowlers couldn't get much on it. Now finally clearing it 100 feet the other way, deep inside the Trojans' end. Three minutes even to go in the first period as that one sent wide. Rebound back to the far side now for Garrity. Up to the wing, finally knocked loose in a skate as Francis Knott gets chased back inside the Prowler zone. Smith gets credit for the goal, but here's Di Pietro, shoots and scores! Quick answer from Di Pietro to make it a tie hockey game once more. 15 to nine shots on goal, but it is 2-2 on the board where it counts. And that took some of the celebration away, if nothing else. 2-2 hockey game. Uh, both series of goals have come back to back like that. Very similar to how the first goals back ahead. There's Wenning tried to pull the trigger on it, but couldn't get much on it. They're going to give that goal unassisted for Di Pietro. As now a two on two in the making across the Prowler line. Here's Sexton. Tried to pick the corner again, but he's going to pay it and gets tumbled into the dashers behind the net to stop the clock now with 2.05 to go here in this first period. A 2-2 hockey game if you're just joining us. Don't forget we're streaming live on Facebook. Just search Troy Trojans Hockey or Troy Ohio TV. We're streaming on both of those pages tonight. 
as well as on YouTube. We're streaming live. Just search for Troy Trojan Taki or Troy Ohio TV, and you can watch us on your smart TV at home through the YouTube app or on your mobile device. And again, glad to have everybody tuning in from around the world tonight to the Troy Trojan Taki Network as the Trojans still trying to control. Bouncing puck and around. There's a shot wide. Off the side. Took a bit of an angle there. So we'll do that one again. And that should be enough, I would think. again by Barnes trying to control it. stood him up at the line and he's going to draw a penalty in the process that was Jack Crawford at the blue line and the Trojan bench not happy with what they're seeing right now it's going to be an elbowing penalty now with 104 to go and that's going to go against Jack Crawford as you see him in the penalty box right there Jack Crawford in the box. Two minutes for elbowing is the call from referee Bill Pack, and that puts the Prowlers on their second power play of the night. 0 for 1 in the previous attempt. As the faceoff, one and shot right on to Latif. Forced to head out through center ice, it goes. Intercepted by the Prowlers. Now they come back the other way and across the Trojan line before Smith puts him into the hip check. Sends it rink wide back from Martinique, back in the far wing corner. Cycles through with Sexton, battles along the dashers, finally makes it far side corner on this high cycle. Nobody was there. And that one forced back out to neutral ice. Little retreat inside their own zone. 29 seconds and counting, and nearly coughed up a dangerous one there. Before this one's going to be shot right on. Stopped and played by Latif as. Long stretch pass ahead. Now for Francis Knott, who goes deep into the far wing corner. Late ahead on this cycle. Retreats back at the red line before the Trojans are able to fire that one in just as time is about to expire. Four seconds and now none. As one period in the books, it is a 2-2 time between the Troy Trojans and the PHA Prowlers from Columbus. And so 15 minutes in, Troy definitely having their work cut up for them in this second period as the Prowlers coming back each and every time the Trojans get a little offense going. And so we'll see what happens. We've got second period puck drop and a lot more. Stay with us right here on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network.
set for period numero dos between the Troy Trojans and the PHA Prowlers from Columbus. A non-conference matchup between these two hockey teams. For a little Sunday night hockey along the banks of the Great Miami River in downtown Troy, Ohio. Glad to have everybody on Facebook and YouTube tonight. As the Trojans facing down a 2-2 tie after 15 minutes of hockey. They'll force that one ahead out into the corner. And again, forced out, 20 seconds to go on that Prowler power play carrying over from the first period as they're playing some dangerous ping pong behind their own bench as Francis Knott was breaking down the slot. Nearly got a piece of it, but here come the Prowlers now across the Trojans line setting up. There's a shot high up into the rafters and I don't think that hit anything and play continues. The ceiling height here from ice to lower steel is 32 feet. And that did not go anywhere near 32 feet high. Despite some of the concert rigging that is also hanging from the lower steel, the scoreboard hangs about 28 feet from the ice level, give or take about 8 to 12 inches from the renovation in 2000. But you don't need to know that. Just know the play continues, and some of the players didn't realize that at the time, and so we'll stop the clock with 13.50 to go here in the second period. And another bouncing puck glove down by Bush. Shot wide angle off the end boards and around. Harris reaching for it, couldn't keep it out. And play regroups off the high glass and around to the half boards right wing side. Carson Smith with a little help back for Harris. Sets it back for Schumann and around now for Harris and up the wing. As Icing is going to be waved off. This one played deep inside the Prowler end as Bush takes a hit into the corner. They'll regroup on this breakout attempt off the referee Bill Peck. He's just fine as that one's going to be picked up by Poe. Steps across the Trojan line. He's just going to dump it into the corner and chases Schumann back to play it now on the near side and a long centering feed across the blue paint cleared as we had returned to even strength hockey during that series. Now both teams getting wholesale changes as you see on your screen as this long head man pass. Cherry picking back the other way and sprawling out was a great effort there by Sexton to knock it away at the last second as he'll play it out from behind the net in the trapezoid and up the wing on the far side as that's held on by the Prowlers. Got all day to walk in on that one, and they do as they'll send it out from behind the net. Finally scooped up by the Trojans on a breakout attempt on the near corner and a big hit into the corner. Back for Bush at the point who holds it in at the line before it's cleared now ahead for Sexton the other way. Here's Cooper Sexton, a backdoor feed. Rebound on the wraparound attempt as he gets stymied off the process. And the loose puck in the slot finally knocked away. Icing signaled and icing the call. A very close call there in front of DeLong's net for the Prowlers. The Trojans had a couple excellent chances there. But the... Puck luck, as they call it in the business, just was not with the Trojans in that instance to find some opening between the wickets. And so with 11.57, even strength hockey, we're going to play this one ahead. Deep inside the zone. Wrapped ahead. Here's Gary with the puck. Tries to get it ahead for Smith a drive as that one was paddled away by DeLong, and they'll force it back into the left wing side now for Smith up the wing. Stopped by Crawford. He'll kick it up the kick plate before it finally clears out to neutral ice and deep inside the Trojans' end. That one hit off a high stick, but they're going to say it was legal. Four feet is the rule, which is crossbar height in the NFHS rule book adopted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. And so really anything under four feet is legal to play. That varies based on different rule sets and different leagues, but Ohio varsity hockey is four feet. 
And so the faceoff remains inside the Trojans end on the glove side of Latif, who makes a pad save across the crease and now outlet for the Trojans as they try to get across the line and finally do. Skating back ahead into the far corner. There's a shot turned aside by DeLong. The rebound back to the far wing. That was Brady Campbell that got a piece of it. They'll work it back down low. Still trying to control back to the far wing. On this outlet pass to center ice. They'll work it across now for Carson Smith who posts up at the red line. Holds on to the puck. Battling it down low. Finally scooped up by Barnes. Here's Will Barnes with a shot. And that rocket is gloved down by D. Long to stop the clock now with 10 minutes and 23 seconds to go. Here in this second period, a 2-2 tie between the Troy Trojans and the PHA Prowlers. A non-conference matchup tonight facing the Miami Valley's best versus some of Columbus's best high school hockey. And glad to have you here as part of it. As the draw won cleanly by the Trojans, top of the circle, but it's going to be picked up by the Prowlers. And now here they come with Sharon back into the far corner. He'll play it rink wide, centering it again, and finally going to be held on to. And we get a stoppage. And the players coming together a little bit there on that one to stop the clock with 10 minutes and 8 seconds to go. And it looks like the faceoff is going to stay inside the Trojans' end. As the Prowlers are going to win this cleanly. Forrest back. So they'll cycle it around. Held on at the point on the far side, though. 21 to 13, the shots on goal. Still in favor of the home team. But it is a 2-2 tie on the scoreboard high above Hobart Arena ice. And that matters in this hockey game. The Prowlers last to light the lamp in response. Just 23 seconds. And now a delayed penalty coming from center ice and the Trojan bench already protesting this one, but it is an interference penalty. And so that's gonna be an interference call against Colin Burkhart with 9.30 to go here in the second period. Eli Wenning just got a 10 minute misconduct as well, so he's into the bench. And so he got a 10. And my guess is probably said something Lee McClure did not appreciate. One of those gentlemen that tends to clutch his pearls on occasion as now he's going to go have a chat with head coach Preston Howes at the bench, as you see the bench right there. This coming with 9 minutes and 30 seconds to go in the second period. Wenning's gone for 10, and 2 minutes up on the board for that penalty to Burghardt, and now a big power play opportunity for the visiting Prowlers right here, as they'll play this one back off the centering pass, working it ahead. And now out through neutral ice. Here's Ian Francis, not shorthanded with an excellent opportunity. And now we've got a penalty from way behind the play. As Bill Peck had it from coming out of the neutral zone, it's going to be a slashing penalty against the Prowlers. And that's going to even things up here. A lucky break for the Trojans with 9 10 to go. And so just like that, we're going to be back to four-on-four four hockey as the faceoff is going to come back inside the Prowler's end as they were the ones to receive the penalty. And so a very lucky break for the Trojans right there with that penalty to even things up before they'll have an abbreviated power play for 20 seconds as they'll force this one out on the faceoff and again behind the net. 
9.05 to go here in the second period as Sexton will play it out from the corner. Under pressure, but holds on to the puck as he'll cycle it ahead now top of the circle near wing. Under pressure, again holds on before he gets tripped up, no call. The Trojan bench wanted one there. They're not going to get it. And a big open ice check sends a clear message to the Prowlers as icing signaled, icing the call. And icing stops the clock with eight minutes and 42 seconds to go. A minute 12 remaining on the four on four. And that penalty for Colin Berghardt has some words being said between Schwannen and Cooper Sexton. They were not having a good time together on the ice after that last play as Sexton headmans the puck back into the far corner. Now for Francis not forcing it back. As they'll work it back to the far side. A shot, and that one hit the inside of the pipe. And that's as close as you're going to get right there as Francis Knott keeps that one in. A close one there for Ian Francis Knott. Almost picked up his second point of the night. Oh, talk about the hockey gods kind of smirking and saying nope. 29 seconds in counting remaining on the penalty to Burkhardt in this four-on-four -four hockey. As Harris will keep that one in, right back to the far corner, intercepted, knocked away at the last second like a pinball machine. And now the Prowlers will clear this one out to an open ice. Offside signaled, and the Trojans forced to tag it up before the Prowlers now will clear it out of their own zone and deep inside Trojan territory. Two seconds in, one second, and now the Trojans will have an abbreviated power play as Burghardt steps onto the ice. Power play for 12 seconds as the bouncing puck makes it all the way back inside the Prowler's line, sends it rink wide. Now for Smith the drive, and DeLong will glove it down, and he will hold on to it now to stop the clock with 7.12 to go in a very entertaining last two or three minutes of clock time, but an exhausting series as well as fresh lines out for both clubs with seven minutes and 12 seconds to go here in this second period. Faceoff remains inside the Prowler end. That's right from the draw. This one scooped up by the visitors. And now across the line they go as they'll post up in between the slot, hit off the puck up high. And right back for Barnes, who battles in the far side boards. Finally clearing it out to neutral ice before it's forced back inside the Trojans end. One touch pass scooped up by Carson Smith, but he overskates the puck and that one turned over at the Trojan line. Still battling for it as Rowley for the Prowlers able to kick it free momentarily and finally it squirts out to Bush at his own line and sends it rink wide now for Luke Harris. Blowing a tire in front of his own bench, he's able to still swat the puck away. That one scooped up now by the Trojans back at their own zone. Here's Andrew Condi, sends it rink wide. Back ahead for Carson Smith, and now up the wing. That one's going to be waved off the icing as the Trojans will finish their line change. Here come the Prowlers across the red stripe, and that's going to be an offsides call by a mile to stop the clock now with 6.02 to go. And a bit of a miscommunication there by the Prowlers on that breakdown caused the offsides. He was a good foot and a half offsides on the play. We hadn't seen much of that so far tonight. With the high tempo, sometimes you do get a little discombobulated on those breakout attempts through center. That was one of those instances as Garrity picks up the loose puck out through center ice. Back inside the Prowler zone. They'll force it out through neutral territory before they'll chip it deep inside the Trojan zone as icing signaled. And just across the line for an icing call with five minutes and 38 seconds to go. And the Trojans have plenty of hockey left this month coming up on the 15th, the start of the annual Miami Valley Freeze. Troy Winter Classic Invitational here at Hobart Arena, that lasting through the 17th. And 
Tickets are available at trojanhockey.com. Get your tickets now for the Miami Valley Freeze Troy Classic at trojanhockey.com. We'll have the Troy games for that one here. Streaming live for you as well if you can't make those. The full schedule posted again at trojanhockey.com or airtimes and when we'll be live. And here's a centering pass and a shot and hit the post again. Same two. Short side and crossbar as the loose puck knocked away. The goaltender thought he had a mitt on top of it. Was not to be. As the high stick waved off as it's touched up by the Prowlers. Di Pietro at his own line. He'll send it back down low at a force. Now picked up by the Trojans in the bouncing puck. Making it all the way back to De Long, who turns it over now for Francis Knott. Sends it around for Beidel. Ethan Beidel with the puck into the near wing corner. He'll send it up the wing now for Burkhart. Low shot on the ice, trying to get a deflection from Smith. Couldn't get much on it as that one will force its way back out from behind the net. And Beidel doing battle down low, finally knocked to his feet. As that one's going to be picked up again by Weaver. High shot off the corner glass. They'll work it back into the near wing corner and doing battle on the half boards as they'll work it up the wing. Finally hit by the Prowlers. Icing signaled and icing the call as it makes it 185 feet the other way for the stoppage now with four minutes and three seconds to go. And the faceoff will come back inside the Trojan end. Again, the rink dimensions a little shorter than NHL regulation here, 185 by 85. But the end zones are NHL regulation, 65 feet from the blue line to the end boards. And so it's that short neutral zone that throws off a lot of teams when they come in. You look at baseball, how each ballpark has unique dimensions that gives a little bit of a home team advantage. And Hobart has about as close to a hockey version of that as you can get with the neutral zone being 15 feet short between blue lines. And you see some of that with offsides calls and some errant passes for visiting teams not used to the short neutral zone as there's a shot turned aside, delayed penalty coming. This one's gonna go against Troy as DeLong comes out of his net, still a delayed penalty and finally the Trojans will touch it up for the whistle. And Lee McClure has it. It's going to be an interference call against the Trojans now with 3.24 to go. And it's Mason Weaver in the box. Interference is the call, and that will put the Trojans back on the penalty kill brought to you by KSM Metal Fabrication, formerly Kerber Sheet Metal, sponsor of this Trojans penalty kill. The loose puck scooped up by the Trojans, puts it in. Francis not had it. And DeLong was able to make the stop. Three minutes and 12 seconds to go here in the second period. Tried to make it a 3-2 hockey game, shorthanded. And a good fast break through center, if nothing else, for Ian Francis not who is turned into a bit of a workhorse here tonight for Preston Howes and his hockey team as the Prowlers back out to center. Inside Trojan territory and around. Breaking through a couple hits. They'll force that one. Top of the circle now for Di Pietro. Sends it rink wide back to the far corner. He'll set it out from behind the net and that one made it through the crease and nobody saw it until it was already long gone. A dangerous play right there if you're a Trojan. As the Prowlers will force that one back in their own zone. Now on a breakout attempt intercepted momentarily by Francis Knott, but now three wide across the Trojans line for the Prowlers is a shot, wide angle shot. Club side will send that one back out to neutral ice now for Brady Smith. Sidesteps the play, Smith losing the puck as his pocket is picked by the Prowlers, now two, three wide now at the Trojans line, forcing that one into the near side. Scooped up by Burghardt and he'll just chip it out. 
Icing waved off, 40 seconds to go on the power play for the Prowlers. Two minutes to go here in this second period from Hobart Arena in downtown Troy. Glad to have you along for the ride. That one's gonna be offsides, and offsides is the call. Now with 1.49 to go. And that'll give some fresh legs for both teams as you can kind of start to see the fatigue factor set in at the tail end of that shift. It was a bit of a long one for both teams as they just couldn't find a good time to get off the ice. And so the faceoff will be on the far wing, directly in front of the Prowlers bench, and that one's flipped up and out of play. And another wonderful souvenir into section 29 Brought to you by OGP, the official game puck providers of Troy Trojans Hockey. Make excellent Christmas gifts. Get them autographed after the game. There's not a kid in Troy that wouldn't like a, an autographed official game puck. And the price is right. As the Prowlers will play it out of their own zone. 1.30 to go. Here in this second period nearing the tail end of the penalty to Mason Weaver. And now Weaver's off the ice as the net comes off the mooring. The Trojans luckily were able to get out of the penalty box before the net was knocked off. And so they'll keep working on that. And so the faceoff continues, it's recording, so. And so they'll force that one back and again. Here's Sexton, a one-timer, tried to get something on it. So they'll play that one again. Off the far side again, cycled in. And we'll try that one again now with a stoppage. 51.5 seconds to go. And so still working with some audio issues. We appreciate you sticking around with us as this one's gonna be played out to neutral ice. Controlled again by DeLong out from the corner. Cycling it through. As we approach the tail end of this second period, here's Smith a shot. That one turned aside. So it looks like most of our audio issues are cleared. As that one played back to the far side and a big save right there by Latif knocks that one away. And we will get an icing call now with 9.2 seconds to go. I'd like to thank some of our supporters who were up here assisting us with some of our audio technical difficulties tonight. But I think we've got most of them sorted out. And when you're up here working in a nearly 70-year-old press box, sometimes uh, not everything works how you'd like it. But I think we've got a good handle on it now. 2-2 two -two between the Trojans and the PHA Prowlers from Columbus in this non-conference affair. Nine seconds to go here in the second period. If you've been joining us for a while and just now hearing us, thanks for being here, as that is the tail end of the second period as 30 minutes of hockey is in the books. It's a 2-2 hockey game between the Trojans and the Prowlers. When we come back, we'll break down the first two periods and set you up for period number three in this non-conference Sunday night hockey from the banks of the Great Miami River in downtown Troy. You're watching Troy Trojans Hockey on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network.
And we welcome you back live inside the historic Hobart Arena in downtown Troy. JT Zabo rejoining you here on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network on Facebook and YouTube. A fresh sheet of ice and 15 minutes up on the big boards here at Hobart Arena. As the Trojans and the Prowlers have settled in for what has turned out to be quite the hockey game so far tonight. A 2-2 tie after two periods is the difference maker as the Trojans trying to make it a two-win weekend after a big win on the road last night and we are underway. The Trojans will control it out of their own zone. We will start this period even strength. And a big head of steam here early in the third. If you're just joining us, both teams trading pairs of goals is the narrative of this hockey game is there's a centering feed, he scores! Right off the bat! And just like that, we're going to start this third period with a third goal for the Trojans. We'll go downstairs for the official word from Roger Mumpower momentarily, but a delayed penalty right off the faceoff. It's going to be an elbowing right from the faceoff. Sexton is going to get the goal and he's also looks like going to get the gate as it's going to be a penalty right off the faceoff as Cooper Sexton is going to go into the box for elbowing 14.26 to go in regulation and elbowing is the call and so just like that the Prowlers are going to be gifted another power play and the faceoff deep inside the Trojan zone. Fast break out through center they go. Here's a head of steam for Smith. He shoots and scores! The rebound trickled back into the net. It counts. It's a 4-2 hockey game. A short-handed goal and a greasy one of that is enough for a 4-2 hockey game. And we talked earlier tonight about the hockey gods smiling upon the Trojans. And, oh buddy, that was a gift wrapped from Santa Claus himself. Smith is going to get the goal. It should be unassisted as it was touched up by the goaltender and somehow trickled back into the net before he was able to realize it. A 4-2 hockey game in the first minute and 10 seconds of the third period. What a difference the tempo makes here in the third and a big open ice check knocks it away, but that's played back by Francis not deep into the corner. Works it back to the point. There's a shot right on. Francis now works it back. Cycles it ahead. Played again. Out inside Trojan territory as they'll force it out from behind the net. Impossible angle shot. They tried to get something on it there. Was not going to happen. And Latif gloves that one down to stop the clock now with 13.07 to go. 29 to 16 are the shots on goal in favor of the Trojans and the Prowlers have another 41 seconds on their power play. They're a third of the night as the Trojans race this one out to center ice. Inside the Trojan, or excuse me, the Prowler end. This one scooped up by the Prowlers and out they come, racing with a head of steam across the Trojans line. Throws on the brakes, sends it back to the point. 
Rink wide for Moore. Top of the left wing, circle and drive right into the crest of Latif, and that's enough to stop the clock now with 12.41 to go. It is four to two hockey game, how quickly the tides had turned, and we're not quite sure what head coach Preston Howes had for the team in the dressing room during intermission, but whatever it was certainly has lifted the energy level of this hockey team here to start the third period. As the Prowlers are in control, and Sexton off the ice, racing for it. 185 feet the other way, and they'll play it. And Sexton giving chase out to neutral ice. It goes across the Trojans' line. They'll force it deep into the corner, bouncing puck around the boards to the left wing side as Smith scoops it up but cannot control. Back out to neutral ice. It goes. Trojans will get a line change as the Puck is going to cross the line, and icing is the call. And that's enough to get fresh legs for both teams as the Trojans will complete their line change. And the faceoff will come back inside the Prowlers' end with under 12 minutes to go in regulation. Troy still holding on to that two-goal lead. And the draw one cleanly, but not controlled cleanly, is now the Prowlers. Have it inside Trojan territory. Off the boards, fired back in, delayed offsides, tagged up, as the Prowlers finally do. And now on this breakout attempt for the Trojans, out to center it goes. Picked up by the Prowlers at their own line, forced it ahead, out through neutral. And racing back to get it. Inside his own zone was Brady Campbell. Out of the corner, now top of the circle. Forces it right back in, near side. Scooped up by Sexton. Tries an outlet pass. Picked up top of the circle again, and a drive. Love down by Latif, and that's enough to stop the clock with 11.15 to go here. In this third period, both teams getting more fresh legs as you get that fatigue factor in. Two games in as many nights for both teams coming into tonight's game. Of course, a big, thrilling win last night at the Kettering Ice Arena for the Trojans. As they hope to keep the winning streak alive for the weekend sweep. Headed into next weekend's Miami Valley Freeze Tournament here at Hobart. And of course, we'll have all of the Troy games streaming live next weekend, the 15th, 16th, and 17th. And for the entire tournament schedule, ticket information, and more, simply visit trojanhockey.com. Always a great time here at the Miami Valley Freeze. Certainly excited to see the teams that are going to be a part of it this year. Offsides waved off as the Prowlers tag up at the line. Almost got chipped into the Trojans' bench and coming off nearly a too many men on the ice penalty. They got away with a big one there. As play continues by Harris, is able to force that one just inside before Moore scoops it up for the Prowlers and out to center it goes. Di Pietro will fire it deep inside the zone as Latif comes out of his net to play it from behind the trapezoid. Up to the wing. Shot in at the point, hit a stick down low as Sexton takes a high stick and continue. Delayed penalty coming as Latif leaves the net. Empty net for the Trojans for the extra attacker on the delay. They're gonna quarterback this breakout attempt under pressure. The Prowlers wanna to touch the puck and get the stoppage. Trojans having a difficult time getting this breakout started, but finally do as the stretch pass now across the line for Sexton. Works it back to the point and it's touched up finally at the point and we'll get a stoppage. A good opportunity for the Trojans with the extra attacker. And now with 9.37 to go, it's going to be a high sticking penalty against the Prowlers. A two minute minor for contact to the head high stick. As you see Bill Peck right there on your screen making the call. Long time official here in the Southwest Ohio High School Hockey League. Former lieutenant of the Ohio State Highway Patrol. And so enforcing the rules is he shoots and scores from the top of the point. 
Send that one to Brady Smith. Right from the faceoff. A beautiful top shelf goal by Brady Smith to make this a 5-2 hockey game. 9.31 to go here in the third. Let's go downstairs to Roger Mumpower for the official word momentarily. And so they're going to give the assist to Cooper Sexton on uh, Brady Smith's goal. And a dandy of a sniper from the top of the slot right off the faceoff was enough to make this a 5-2 hockey game as the Trojans now step across the Prowler line as DeLong will play it back into the near wing corner. Wraps it back around, racing forward is Crawford inside his own end. He's got two chasing, still on the near wing. He's going to force this one all the way down. But icing waved off as DeLong plays it in front of his own net and sends it around. Still controlled by the Trojans as there's a shot, point blank, into traffic. The net is off its moorings and will finally get a whistle as such with 8.47 to go here in the third in this 5-2 Trojan hockey game. Firmly in the driver's seat now with this one as they will get fresh legs. And again, trying to make it a two game winning streak this weekend after a thrilling win on the road last night. A non-conference matchup tonight against the Prowlers and that one's going to be up against the protective mesh to stop the clock with 8.43 to go. And they're going to say that tipped off a Prowler so the faceoff will remain inside the visitor's end. And it's Smith in to take the draw. He's got Sexton on his wing. And Francis not a very dangerous line. Originally put together by head coach Rick Zabo about two seasons ago. And these three have really meshed well together. And you see the results of that now is Sexton with the loose puck. Toe drags through the slot all by himself. Shoots. Pad save made by DeLong. Rebound out in front, knocked away at the last second. As they'll play this one around for Condi. Keeps it in at the line momentarily before the Prowlers are able to clear it inside the Trojans' end, and they do. Steps across, a shot high off the high glass. Rebound back to the far side as the Trojans will throw this out to neutral ice. Racing for to Smith across the line. There's a drive, and that one just wide off the end boards. And a rebound in front of the benches as the Trojans regroup at their own line. Under pressure, they'll fly it back inside the zone. Little help there from the left wing corner as it's scooped up again by Sexton. Posts up, back to the point for Schumann, a drive. Loose puck, hits off the end boards. Rebound, that got a piece of DeLong it's somewhere. He'll feel that one in the morning as the Prowlers forced to ice this one down. Scooped up by Latif and Condi battling down low into the corner trying to clear it. 7-16 and counting in regulation and Latif just throws a mitt on top of it to stop the clock with 7-13 now in this hockey game. A 5-2 Trojan lead thanks to a flurry of activity to start this third period of regulation including one really greasy goal that trickled into the net all by its lonesome as the bouncing puck played into the near wing corner. Rowley for the Prowlers, can't contain, sends it back for Schwarman. Through the slot and under pressure, Trojans are congealing. And now out to neutral they come. Before this one tossed right back in by the Prowlers and back to chase is the cannon, Jack Crawford. Sends it out to center. Here's the centering feed, padded away. I think the blocker pad got a piece of it before it knocked loose. And now DiPietro too wide across the Trojans line for the Prowlers. Gets that one in before he's hit off the puck by Garrity. He'll work it back into the far wing corner. Still working with Berghardt as it comes out in a shot. Padded away by Latif. 
as Luke plays it top of the circle for the Prowlers. Gets it down low into the slot. Impossible angle. Latif got a brief glimpse of it before it makes its way. Back to the half board. Top of the circle left wing side. Net stays in on side. And a good play it is. Delayed penalty coming. It's going to go against Troy. And that's about as obvious a penalty as you're going to get in this building. To stop the clock with 5 minutes and 59 seconds to go. It's a tripping penalty. And so one of those cases of a wrong place at the wrong time for Carson Smith. So timeout on the ice. As you can see, both teams right there conversing. It was the Prowlers that called timeout. And so the faceoff is going to stay inside the Trojan zone. And don't forget, the Trojans have a big weekend coming up next weekend as they once again host the annual Miami Valley Freeze Troy Winter Classic Invitational here at Hobart Arena. Three whole days of varsity hockey action starting on the 15th through the 17th. And tickets and full schedules are available now at trojanhockey.com. Like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, we will have all of the Troy games right here streaming live on the Troy Trojans Hockey Network on Facebook and on YouTube, wherever you prefer to watch us, either on your smart TV through YouTube or on your mobile device through YouTube or Facebook. As the Trojans, now with a head of steam, here's Sexton. Under pressure in behind the net. Throws into the dashers. Battling down lower to the near quarter. The Prowlers on the power play for another 90 seconds as the puck being finally moved, or is it, as the referee was yelling to move the puck, and it was a hopeless cause, and I think in basketball we would just call that a jump ball and move on, but they gave it a good opportunity, if nothing else, and so the faceoff is going to stay inside the Prowler zone. That's why we don't use those possession lights on the scoreboard here at Hobart for the hockey games, at least. Although that's not a bad idea. Something for the rules committee, perhaps. As here's Sheeran, a paddle save made by Latif for the accolades of the crown here. And a big open ice check, knocked that one away. Delayed penalty coming. It's going to go at least right now against the Prowlers. It's a cross-checking penalty. Four minutes and 56 seconds. And that's what we're going to get to even things out a little bit. As the referee Lee McClure had it from behind the play. It's a cross-checking penalty against Gable, and that will bring the faceoff back inside the Prowler zone and even things up at four apiece for about 57 seconds as we're just under five minutes to go here in regulation. 57 seconds remaining on that Carson Smith penalty from earlier, and the Trojans will then have an abbreviated power play, their fourth of the night for just over a minute, barring any additional instances of penalty box behavior and so Latif back to play it out of his own zone on the breakout attempt for the Trojans out to center it goes racing for Barnes he'll get it deep inside the Prowler zone as Wenning comes in with a low shot 
Closed up shop. Back off the high glass from that deflected puck. Now ahead for Schumann. Racing in to the half boards. That was hit with a high stick, but nobody saw it, so play continues. As Schumann, top of the circle with a backhand. Tries to dish it back into the corner, but couldn't. And now here comes Sheeran for the Prowlers back the other way. Had a steam back into the corner. As they'll race for it down low. Still with the loose puck. Out to center right now as Luke picks it up for the Prowlers. He'll retreat back at his own line. And now the Trojans return to full strength and have a power play for one minute. Trojans on the power play now. As Di Pietro walks in on Latif. The net looked like it was off the post, but it remained on and play continues. As there's Smith with the loose puck down low into the corner. Smith, the centering feed, tried to get he and Francis not, but it got him in the hand. And that one's going to leave a welt for the trainer to work out tomorrow. It is a school night, kids. And so let's not beat ourselves up too much. Fortunately, the trainer will be in bright and early tomorrow. As the centering pass from behind the net knocked away by the Prowlers. They'll work it up at the point. Under pressure. Walks in. Loose puck as Francis Knott was on the short side for the rebound. He'll touch it up with the high stick. And an unfortunate break for the Trojans will bring the face off back inside the Troy zone. Now with three minutes and four seconds to go in regulation. 38 to 25 the shots on goal on the big boards here at Hobart. Eight seconds remaining on the Trojans' abbreviated power play opportunity. Certainly been more effective on the penalty kill tonight, as we've seen the light lamp shorthanded, as that one's going to be scooped right up by Latif and wisely held on to to stop the clock with exactly three minutes to go. Here in regulation, and we're going to do that one again. Same location. And this puck cleanly won by Sexton, but the Trojans struggling to push it out through the middle. And finally, we return to even strength and a big open ice check knocks Sexton off the puck. Clean open ice check. He's able to get back up and control the puck momentarily before it clears back out inside Trojan territory. Latif thought for a brief moment of going back to get it but under that much pressure, wasn't gonna risk it. And so the Trojans throw it back at the point. Nobody was there. And the Prowlers retreating. Scooped up by Berghardt at his own line. Pumps it just over the line where it's picked up by Di Pietro, who's hit by Sexton. Loose puck off sides. Play continues. And he's getting hauled onto his vital with the puck. Getting hooked from behind, no call. Even strength hockey as they'll work it down low. Forcing the puck up high, that's Grayson Stanton. Touches it up, no high stick call as they'll work it back. Vital blows a tire in the left wing corner where it's picked up by the Prowlers. And out they come to center ice. Too wide across the Trojans line. He's going to shoot and score, but Vital was tripped from behind. He wanted a penalty. I don't know if he's going to get it, but you had Vital tangling with him there, and then he gets tripped just as that one goes in. So there was a lot going on, and the Trojans bench was really looking at both circumstances, wanting an explanation. The goal right now is going to stand. But the referees completely missed Vinyl getting tripped on his way to the bench from behind, and so a very uncertain, unusual circumstance, we'll say that, to cut the lead back down to two. As they'll work this one down low. Turner's going to get credit for the goal. 120 and counting here in regulation. As here's Luke Harris racing forward inside the. Power zone. Scooped up in front of the penalty box. Back for Smith, and they're going to say that one's offsides. And that stops the clock with 107 to go. And that's enough for the faceoff to remain in the neutral zone. 38 27, the shots on goal. Still in favor of the Trojans. 
who hold on to that 5-3 lead on the board where it counts, just 67 seconds away from their second win of the weekend. As they'll play that one around. Get off the puck and held on. One minute in counting here as Latif's gonna hold on and just keep it for himself. And really, that's the best case scenario for him right there. And so the faceoff is gonna stay inside the Trojans' end. Forced back ahead. They're gonna tangle it up against the kick plate and the half boards before it finally clears out. Under a little bit of pressure, two on one the other way for the Trojans is racing for it was Wenning. He got punched in the head from behind and he went into the bench and referee Lee McClure was right there on top of it. He saw the entire thing as Wenning was hit in the head and went flying into the net. And that's why he was buried into the cage. And so that's a roughing minor for McConaughey. And that'll end the hockey game with the Trojans having a 23 second power play with 23 seconds left in regulation in this five to three hockey game as the Prowlers quickly fire that one deep inside the Trojan zone. Crawford back to play it out from behind his own net. Throws on the brakes. He's gonna hold on to it before he'll toss it back for Weaver as Mason Weaver sends it in front of the net. A very dangerous play as it's picked up by DiPietro for the Prowlers and fired back in as time will expire. And that'll do it for the Trojans. And so that is it for Sunday night hockey along the banks of the Great Miami River in downtown Troy, Ohio is the Troy Trojans holding on to a 5-3 win against non-conference foe, the PHA Prowlers from Columbus. And a final score, five to three, concludes two back-to-back -back wins for the Trojans in their home and away weekend series. And a pretty good weekend for head coach Preston Howes right there that also saw his wife and his own mother introduced during teacher appreciation festivities before the game. Again, we'll be back on the air next weekend as part of the Miami Valley Freeze Invitational here at Hobart Arena. Tickets in full schedule available now at TrojanHockey.com. For our entire crew up here, for the always awesome Roger Mumpower downstairs, for Lily, Riley, John Wyatt, Rhino, Bumblebee, and of course our little Cheetah, our executive producer back at the station. I'm JT Zabo. Your final score tonight, Troy 5. PHA Prowlers 3, we'll see you next weekend on the ice.